All right. Welcome to the podcast, everyone. And today I have Sandy Glant, who I just adore. I feel like we've been connected for probably like three or four years now, which is crazy. And you're you're just an amazing woman. I, I think we had you on our podcast uh, like back in 2020, which feels like yesterday and also like forever ago. But you were to this day... Yep. <laughs> my favorite podcast that I've ever done just because of your energy oh. and how you approach life. I'm a big on efficiency and effectiveness. And so I feel like you, your content and who you are um, really like nails on that. So I'm just so excited to have you on the podcast. Thank you. Yeah, of course. And oh, you have some thank you things. for having me. You're right. Oh, it does feel like forever ago, but then it also feels like it was just yesterday. <laughs> I know it's wild. And you've been doing so many different things that we just talked about. You've been, uh, I guess, inducted as Miss International 2022, which is so insane and exciting. You're a mom. You have so much going on. I would love to hear from you just kind of how you got started in everything that you're doing. You're like masterful in productivity, outsourcing, delegating, systematizing, all of it. So I would love to hear from you how you got into this world of productivity and even like the, the Miss International pageant things. Yeah. So I'll, I'll give you kind of the, how I got into the business side of this first. So, um, before I became a mom, I was in the wedding industry. I was doing wedding planning and event planning. And if you know anything about events or weddings, or if you've had one, you know, that there's so many details, uh, that go into that process. So, um, I was doing that in Pennsylvania, had moved to Florida, um, at the time for my boyfriend, who's now my husband, spoiler alert. <laughs> and um, when I moved here, um, I, you know, we got married. And then within almost about a year, I had a baby. So I was running a business, but for the first time ever had to figure out how to show up as the wife, run a business, the home, and now also be a mom. And it was one of those moments for me that was, it was a breakdown, but it was a breakthrough because I didn't know how to do it all. I, and I, I'm sure that there's so many women listening that are like, oh my God, like I resonate with this because this is where I was, where I just felt like, how do I run on all cylinders the way I was used to and continue to show up as a mom now and the wife and run the home and a business. And it felt so overwhelming to me. Mm. So that breakdown moment was truly my breakthrough because I remember saying, okay, I know I'm being put here for a reason to experience this because if I'm feeling this, I know other women are also feeling this. I have to find a way to figure this out. So through that journey of figuring out how to systemize and automate and run the business and the home and all of the things, I was doing that in my own life, but I was also then helping my clients do that for themselves and their own businesses. So it really was this evolution of figuring out solutions to my own problem and then helping others do the same thing. And it wasn't like, it started out very simple. It was like postpartum, wake up and make your bed. And I know it sounds so simple, but when you're in that beginning stage of, postpartum, you have a baby and you probably haven't showered in three days, like making your bed is a huge accomplishment. So, yeah. you know, you put owning a business on top of that, making sure dinner's on the table, uh, your baby's fed. I mean, at the time I was breastfeeding and just, again, doing all of the things, it becomes very overwhelming. But when you can break it down into foundational steps where you're like, okay, I'm winning with little steps every single day, it's compounding those efforts that allow you to say, you know what, I may not be moving mountains every single day, but I am getting progress. And that's what accumulates into eventually those big wins. Before you know, you turn around and you're like, wow, I'm so much further than I thought I would be. Totally. And what I, I feel like it's so big right now to like theme days, theme weeks, theme hours, right? Like whatever it may be, because so many people are wearing so many different yeah. hats. I'm not a mom. And sometimes I'm like, I have so many things going on. I don't even know how someone like you does it where you're Miss International 2022. You're running a business. You're a wife, you're like a good <laughs> wife, a good mom, right? You're present with your kids. And it still seems like you have time in the day. So I'm curious what your structuring looks like of maybe it's your month, maybe it's your week, maybe it's your day. Um, Cause I feel like so many yeah. people need like step-by-step -step how to make sure no balls are dropped and you can get it all done. Yes. Yes. Okay. So for me, it starts with, I sit down with my husband. I literally have one, two, maybe even three YouTube videos on this. We sit down with a big desk calendar and we do our whole year, like at the beginning of January. So like January one, we sit down and we plan out our whole year. Now, most people are like, okay, how do you even do that? 
Well, when you have schedules for your husband and yourself and your kids and vacation days and travel days, you know these things ahead of time. Of course, they're going to change. So that's why we sit down, do the yearly, but then we break it down each quarter with each other. We sit down and we go through and we update. So of course, again, dates are going to change. Travel is going to change. So we're always, and we're constantly updating that. Um, but there's so many other little just details that go into it. Things like syncing up calendars, making sure that, you know, everything's color coded, the right people have the information that we need. So for us, it's family members who help us. I, I have help in my home. So we have a nanny. I have one son who not yet because it's summertime, but I have one son um, who's in school and then another one who's at home. I work from home. So and my husband's out of the home. So he works in an office. So again, there's a lot of moving pieces. And those people that are you know, interwoven into our daily life, Jared's assistant, my in-laws, Jared's mm -hmm. calendar, like that's all also tied together. So my husband and I are saying, this is what we have going on. This is when, when we want to take vacations or travel, or he's traveling for work, or I'm traveling for the pageant or my own work, whatever it is, everyone's in alignment and it makes everything, all the moving pieces so much easier. So, you know, yeah. that's kind of like the bird's eye view of how we run it. And then myself personally, my team and I run my business very strategically on just the days of the week. So I have certain days that I have content days for me. It just so happens to be Fridays um, are my content days. My Mondays are my group program days. And then my, my middle of the week is when I have my one-on-one um, -on -one clients that I work with. So again, mm -hmm. like it's very strategic. Also the hours that I work, I work from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. If you follow me on Instagram, I'm up at five o'clock in the morning to get my workout in, which this morning my kids were up at 5.30 and my Jakey was with me in the gym working out. Well, not, he wasn't working out, but he was watching me work out. So I'm just very dedicated in where I show up and very disciplined. And I believe that if you want to live an extraordinary life, you have to be disciplined. You mm -hmm. have to have non-negotiable set because if you don't, I know people are like, well, I want to have the freedom to do the things I want to do. Well, the reality is, is you have more freedom when you build in the non-negotiables and the boundaries than you would if you had, if you didn't have any at all. Yes. Oh my gosh. This is so good. And I feel like the two <laughs> biggest pieces of what you just talked about was like one delegation and being willing to like ask for help and then outsource things. And I feel like a lot of people have a really hard time yes. releasing control. Um, what advice would you give? I know even like my boyfriend, I'm like, delegate to me if you need, like ask for help, yeah. ask for support, like, cause we're in business together and it can be really hard for some people yeah. to like, release control or feel like they have to do it all themselves, especially business owners, whether they have kids or yeah. not. How do you recommend people start to delegate, outsource? What can you delegate? Like, how do you decide what to delegate, who to delegate yeah. to those kinds of things? Yeah. So I remember before I had a team, because now I have an amazing team who helps me with all of these different aspects of my business. But before I had a team, not even one person on my team, I did an exercise. And this I'm sure will be helpful to a lot of people. And what I did is I wrote out every single thing I did in my business because it was only me. There was nobody else to outsource to or give hand something over to. It was only me. So I just made a list. And probably at the time, it was maybe 50 or 60 things that I was like, okay, this is me. Like every single thing was Sandy, 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 right? So what I did is after I listed those things out, I said, okay, what are the things that I am I'm willing to give to somebody else? Like what can I take off my plate? And so what I did is I started to say, and in the beginning, it was only one person. So like my advice now would, would, would not be give everything to just one person. I would say, find someone who that's their zone of genius. Because as I started bringing more people into my business, I would say, okay, you're really good at videography. Okay. The VA is not going to do the video editing. The videographer is going to do the video editing or the, the systems, you know, back end in my business. She's not going to do the graphics. The graphic girl is going to do the graphics, right? Yeah. So like hiring people to their expertise and anytime someone on my team now wants to take on more work or is like, Hey, I'm ready to step into, you know, more, uh, obligations. I want to take on more work. I'm, I don't just give work to give them work. I ask them, what are your strengths? Like, what is it that you're really good at? Because I'm not going to put, first of all, I'm not going to set any, anyone up for failure. It's going to make me look bad. It's going to make them look bad. But mm -hmm. I want to know what their strengths are because then it works for everybody. It's going to work for me because it takes it off my plate. It's going to work for them because they're really good at what they do. They can probably even do it faster and better than me. 
And Mm -hmm. again, in the beginning, it was just, well, what don't I like doing or what can someone take off my plate that's better than me? And that's where I started. And little by little, the more comfortable you get with it, the more you feel like you can release that power and you don't have as much anxiety around letting someone else take it off your plate for you. 100%. Yeah. It's, it's, it's willing to like release things off your plate that you're just not as good at. And it's not your zone of genius, as I like to say. And then you can go focus on the things yeah. that build your business. And those are things that are outsourceable. But it's, I think, also slowing down to take the time to teach someone else how to do it one time so that it releases the space yes. for the next five years or six years, you know? So yeah. I think that's, I think that's great. Yeah. The other part of that. Yeah. And we have a very clear. Uh, sorry, it's leggy. What's that? Sorry, it legged. It legged. Oh, okay. I was saying we have a very clear in my business, um, an onboarding system as well. So I also have someone on my team that does all the onboarding. So I don't have to do that at this point either. So if there's someone new that's coming in, there is there's an assistant in my business that will teach them what the SOPs are. So if you're not sure what that stands for, it's standard operating procedures. That could be for anything in the business, sending out emails, making graphics, uploading YouTube videos, making descriptions, like anything that we do, there's SOPs and someone else, like we have an entire file for that. So someone else can go in if they needed to do it, follow that SOP or not just after I hire, then show them and teach them how to go through and do it. Yes, that's so good. I remember when SOP, when when I started my my second business, I was like, I don't know how to write operational procedures or anything like that. And but yeah. what I found is they're so valuable to open up the time. So it's like if you're new in business and yeah. you're starting out, if you do something more than once or twice, write out what you do so that yes. the next person you hire, they can do it and they can execute it just as if you were to do it, were doing it. Um, yes. I love that. So absolutely. The, the first part of that was delegation. The second part that I like that you spoke about is the consistency and the dedication to your business. And even for myself, what I found is for me, I'm like, I'm so focused on building this business and it consumes a ton of my time. I'm like, that is a priority for me. Yeah. And so things like content, things like personal life sometimes get pushed aside. And I'm sure a lot of people feel that mm-hmm. way where they're like, I feel like I have to create content. I have to be a mom. I have to be a good wife. I have to build the business. At what point do you say you just need to do it all versus like focus on your business right now or focus on content right now? How do you decide what are the primary objectives or the most important things to focus on at different stages in your business? So for me, business and life, like I've always been able to kind of look at it like seasons, right? Like when I had Jake or Jordy, like that was such a a heavy season for me where I was like, it's so much more about being with my family and my babies than it is about business right now. So I think you have to honor the season that you're in. And if you're in a season where you're like, you know what, my kids are a little bit older and I get to focus more on business right now, then Mm -hmm. just know where you're at. Because I think a lot of people talk about mom guilt and really what mom guilt is, is wherever you are, you feel guilty for not being somewhere else. Mm -hmm. And Usually that's with your kids. So for me, I've been able to look and say, okay, do I need to step back and be more with my kids right now? And sometimes it means just putting the phone down or taking them out, you know, for a bike ride or to the park. But other times I need to be more present in my business. So if you identify first what those areas are, you're not going to feel that pull, or at least you're not going to feel it as much. Um, when you say like, I know I'm showing up here. I know that this is where I need to be, but also that doesn't mean that the other thing is not getting attention. But for me, I like to fully show up where I'm at. So if I'm here on an interview, I'm a hundred percent here, but uh, uh, if I'm with my kids, then like this morning, uh, Jake and I were playing like a matching card game together. I don't even know where my phone was at. It was maybe in the kitchen. It was somewhere. It was not near me. And I'm fully present with him in that moment. So I think just like understanding, especially for women and knowing that we wear so many different hats, that there, there are seasons for everything. You have to identify where you're at, what's important to you. And it's always going to... it it's life, right? There's work, there's business, there's kids, there's the home. I mean, there's so many moving pieces, but you have to identify where you want to show up because if you don't have that identified, you're going to feel stretched so thin and like nothing is ever really like fully fulfilled. Mm -hmm. Totally. Totally. It's, it's, 
it's really, I mean, I feel like it just comes back down to discipline almost all the time. It's like, what are your priorities? Yes. And then you prioritize your priorities yep. and then you are disciplined about them because they're important to you. Like it really just comes down to that. And yes. if you, I would yes. say like whatever your time is going towards is what you prioritize. So it's like, you're already showing yourself yes. what your priorities are right now. If you want to change your priorities, you can, but you have to be aware of what they currently are. And usually people are prioritizing or focusing on the wrong things. That's- yeah. And you know, there's so many distractions too, that I think if people, I just did a whole podcast episode on this and it's like, if, if we really looked at all the distractions that we had and there's so many, I mean, it can be social, it can be TV, it can be little pop-ups or notifications. Like we allow that into our world. And if we don't stop it and say, okay, you know what? I'm going to shut off the TV and read a book with my kids tonight, mm-hmm. or I'm going to turn off the notifications and just focus in on getting the email out or making the content or whatever, because like how many times do we get on social to make a piece of content and you get trapped into like scrolling content, you know? So I think it's really important to know where those traps are, like those time suckers are. So when you're doing it, you can get out of it faster and just show up where you need to show up and, and kind of like funnel all the other noise out. Totally. Yes. Yes. How do you feel you, (laughs) this is so good. How do you feel you integrate in self-care? You only work from 10 to three, which is like not Mm -hmm. normal for online business owners. You wake up early, but you're like done at three o'clock. So you obviously have a quality of life. You spend time with your family. How do you integrate in self-care? Because also you work 10 to three, but you've also written a book. You have courses. You're like building an actual business and you compete in pageants. Like you are, you're traveling with family. Like how do you incorporate in self-care? You still look amazing. You have time to do all the things. What are your pieces of advice on that? (laughs) Thank you. So I get up early. I mean, I used to, I, I, it's so funny because I, I always used to say, I'm not a morning person. I'm not a morning person because I'd go to bed so late and then I'd wake up late, but my lifestyle is not conducive to that anymore. So I, above anything else, I prioritize my sleep. So I just know if I don't get sleep, I lose my patience. I am just like, not, I'm not in a good mood if I don't get my sleep. So I need at least eight hours a night. So that is very, very important to me because that will dictate everything else, how I show up with my kids, how I show up in business for my team. Like that is, I I know myself. And I think that you, each person individually, you have to know, like some people can run on four hours of sleep. I don't recommend it. I wouldn't do it. But if that's you, then that's you. Um, for me, that is first and foremost. So I get my eight hours. I'm, I go to bed about 9, 9.30, and then I'm up about 5, 5.30 school year. It's a hard 5 a.m., but summertime, I have, I'm a little bit more lax during the summer, you know, summertime schedule. Um, so that is always my non- non-negotiable because from, let's say, 5.30 till maybe 7 o'clock in the morning, I'm working out. I get an hour of workout time and weightlifting, walking. And I have that, like, I have a Peloton. Um, we have the tread and the bike. And I have these little desks that go on top of the Peloton, the tread. And I'll put my computer on there and I'll be uploading a video or writing content yes. or sending out emails. So even though I say I'm not like working in the morning, I mean, when I do my weightlifting, it's full on weightlifting. It's, there's no distractions. But while I'm just walking on the treadmill, there's that's 30 minutes where I can be doing just computer work. Yes. Um, so that's a great way to smart multitask. Um, mm-hmm. And then, you know, everything else, hair and nails and tanning or vacations, whatever. Like I, I always prioritize that because for me, if I feel good, that is how I'm going to be able to serve and to help others. Because if not, it's just, I've gone on the days when I haven't done the hair and the nails and you know what? I don't feel good. I know some people can do it, but for me, I need to prioritize that. So for me, it's always been a part of my routine and my schedule to have that included in, you know, how I take care of myself. Mm -hmm. Oh, so good. That's so good. Yeah. Some, I feel like for (laughs) Many years I didn't get ready. I was like, I'm going to work from home. I'm in my early 20s. I didn't have to do any of it. And I was like, I found myself not wanting to get on video. I found myself not wanting to get on like a last yes. minute with someone where if I'm ready, I'm just prepared yep. for the day. I'm going to go out. I'm going to attract better things into my yep. life. It makes such a difference for me personally. And you know um, what? I do like five minute makeup. It's not even it's, like, it's, I mean, what you see now, this isn't like glam pageant makeup, but it's also not nothing either, you know? So yep. I've kind of gotten the, 
like the five minute routine mm-hmm. down where I'm like, okay, I can do the foundation. I can do a little bit of mascara and some blush and like pull it together in a quick five minutes. Yeah. And cause like, I don't know, I, I know some women just like love makeup. I'm just like, let's just do it and get it over with so I can like move on to the next thing. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm usually like Slack messaging and I'm like putting mascara on mm-hmm. 10 minutes on my face. Yeah. It doesn't take that long to put yourself together a little bit. Right. And it makes a big difference. Yes, it really does. It really does. With that, <laughs> I, f- I feel like another thing that you're amazing at from the outside looking in is building your business. I mean, I feel like you're just naturally more in your feminine than you are your masculine. And maybe that's always just been more natural for you. Maybe it's not. And I'm not seeing something. But how do you manage mm-hmm. like being married, being in your feminine while also building a business, which takes like deadlines, get things done, discipline, and like meshing the two. Um, obviously, you and your husband are not in business together, but your life in your life together. So I'm curious how you maneuver yes. or manage that. So it's so funny because I feel like I'm more in my masculine than I am in my <laughs> Because I, you know, masculine is just like you said, it's the deadlines, it's running a team, it's making sure even like when the kids have to get into bed that they're, you know, they go from, from dinner time to bath time to books to bedtime. Like it's, it's that routine. It's that we got to get things done. So I feel like I've actually had to learn how to embrace more of that feminine side of me, especially even more for my husband, because he's super, you know, masculine when it comes to what he's doing and his career and his job. And I've had to learn, like I've literally had to take courses on how to turn it on, like how to turn on the feminine because like, yes, I'm a girly girl, but I'm also very like, let's get it done. Let's go. Let's, you know? (laughs) So I have had to learn how to be more feminine energy and like bring that into the home. And again, like I love dressing up and, and, and like flowers and, and all of that, you know, like, you know, taking care of yourself, being in that energy. But I've, I've had to learn how to do and be more of that because I feel like it more than masculine comes natural to me. Mm, fascinating. Well, whatever you've done has really worked <laughs> because from the outside <laughs> perspective, maybe it's because you're a girly girl, but I feel like your energy essence is very feminine and maybe you still are very, you know, type A, get it done. But I feel like your energy is so, so feminine, which is great. What courses did you take? Um, so it was, uh, it was about a, was it a year, maybe a year and a half ago. I'll have to go back and, and get the name, but it was, um, oh my gosh, I'll, I'll get it for you so we can put, so we can link it, (laughs) but it was, it was, and I'll send it to you. I don't know if she still does it. Um, but, but yeah, it was just about learning, like, like leaning into your femininity and like, you know, being that be like, what did she call it? It was like, um, it wasn't Omega. It was, there was another terminology that she used for it, but it was really me learning how to become more of that Love at that. home because I work at home and then I'm yes. wife and mom at home. So again, like where I'm at physically in my energy space, like in my office, yes, I'm in alpha, but then everywhere else, it's like, I need to be, I need to be more in the feminine, like, yes. you know, when my husband comes home and, yes. and just creating that for, for our life together. Mm-hmm. Totally. I feel like so many women struggle. With, I feel like that's a big pain point. I know even for myself, like my business partner and my boyfriend will come home and I'm just like in like executive mode. And it's like, that yes. doesn't work for it does for certain yes. times of day and scenarios. But it's like, then if you're like 9pm and you're like driving to get shit done, it just doesn't resonate. Yeah. So that's and, a, and what I've had to learn too is like, it's not a competition because he'll be like, oh, I had such a rough day. I'm like, oh, me too. Like, blah, blah, blah. and then I'm like, wait a minute. It's not like, we're not trying to level up each other. Like we're on the same team, you know? And, and so for both of us, I think my husband has done a really good job at kind of even helping me step more into it because he'll be like, okay, Sandy, like I can, I, I get more aggressive in terms of like getting things done. Like I said, the deadlines, things like that. Um, so he'll do a good job of kind of like helping to pick up some of the pieces, even at home, um, just to make sure that like, okay, like if mom needs to go work out, like I'll take the kids. So she has her hour, like on the weekends, you know, cause, cause mornings, that's always my time during the week, but on the weekends, like we'll go for a bike ride. We'll do something outside. Um, but he, he, he knows, like he knows he's got me pinned. Like he knows like when mom needs a minute to like, you know, go work out or whatever, you know, Yes. Get in I my, get in my zone. hundred <laughs> percent. That's so good. That's so good. And you have a yeah. course coming out. 
that seems very exciting. I would love if you can talk about that and share it with people. I feel like they're sorry, there's an ambulance driving by. I'm in New York, so <laughs> hello, New York. <laughs> I know. I would love if you can share what your course is going to be. It sounds like it's really going to support moms, productivity, all the things we've talked about today. Yes. So for me, again, being a working mom, I my motto is you get to have it all. You get to have the babies, mm-hmm. the body, and make bank. And for me, it's always been, but how do I, how? Like, how do I do those things? And it comes down to really three things. It comes down to the systems. It comes down to the automations and the support. So it's the program that's coming out that's launching in August. It's called the Power Mom 4x4. And the whole purpose of the program is to learn how to teach moms how to work just like I do about four hours a day, four days a week and make six figures, well into the six figures. And I know it sounds crazy because I've taught, I've been talking about this program for a few weeks now and I have women that come to me and say, how? How is this possible? How can I do this? I don't even believe that I can do this. So number Mm. one, you have to have the belief that you can do it. But number two, it's focusing on those three things, automations that support you, right? So if you're doing anything more than one time in your business, there is a way to automate. There are systems that you can implement into your business. So your business is working even when you're not working. So like I'll be out at the park with my kids riding on the bike and then emails are going out and uh, social media is going out and posts are being made. And you know what? I'm, I, I've got my phone, my music going and I'm on the bike with my kids and the business is still running like a machine. So if that's something that you're interested in and you're like, oh my gosh, I'm a mom. And for me, the reason why I created this program is because I don't want to be chained to my computer eight or 10 hours a day. Maybe before kids, yeah, that was great. But now being a mom, I want to run a successful, profitable business and I want to show up and be an amazing wife and mom. And the only way to do that is to have systems, automations, and support that allow you to focus on the money-making moves in your business when you're in your business, but then also unplug when and actually be with your kids and be present when you're out with them. I love that. I love that. I feel like no one is really <laughs> teaching that stuff. And I love it because you actually live it. Like how you said, your bank account, your business and your body, like you live that yeah. to a T. And when you live that, you know it and you teach it so well that I know yeah. that's going to help so many people, so many moms. And um, it's really simple things to do, but it's having like the community, the accountability, the information to yeah. be able to just do it. Because once you can do it and set yeah. it up, then it works for you. And that's, that's the magic. Nice. I think. And, and that's the thing. Like I was never a, a techie person. Like, I, like to me, it, like that scares me. I'm like, Oh my God, the tech behind it all. But the thing is, is when you have your own business and you need to learn how to do it, now you can teach others. Look, it's not number one. It's not as scary as we think it is. And mm-hmm. number two, that once you have it, you can update it, you can change it, whatever you need to do. But once you have it, you have it and you can set it, forget it, and you use it as much as you want or as little as you want. So, yes. you know, all these automations in the back end that most people are like I was in the beginning, I was so afraid of. Once you have it, you realize how powerful it is and how much it supports you in running your business, even when you're not the one that's working. What do you what do you see for the future of your business? Like what is next for you, for your company, um, for your family? What are you most excited about? Yeah. So for right now, um, it's launching this new program because again, I wish I would have had this 10 years ago, you know, when I started and I was kind of lost. I mean, I was at a point where I was like, how do I do this? How do I show up and be present? Like we were talking about in the beginning of this episode, you know, how do I run the house and be present with my family and run the business? So that's where my focus is right now is really helping women step into this, know that they can have it all and you don't have to be burnt out and stressed out to do it. And then I have a few personal things that are on the horizon that I'm excited to announce coming up shortly. Um, Mm -hmm. My reign for Mrs. International 2022 uh, is coming to an end in about a week here. So I have some exciting new um, personal and, well, personal and professional things that are on the horizon that I'm excited to announce that I'll be doing in the second half of the year. Oh, that's so great. Where can people find you, follow you, um, sign up for the course at? Where where do all those things live? We can link them below as well. Yeah. 
So um, on social, I'm at Sandy Glantz. So it's Sandy with an I, S A N D I Glantz. And I have my YouTube channel. I have a bunch of freemiums and downloads um, on Instagram that you can find there for me. I've got free planners and and just kind of guides. Like we were talking about, you know, how do you do the planner, the monthly overview planner? I have all of that there for you because I really want to give these resources so people can start tapping into it. And once you start getting a taste of the wins and it actually working for you, it's like you can't you can't unsee that. Then you you get hungry for more. And I really want to support women on that journey. So um, if you follow along with me on Instagram, YouTube, I mean I'm everywhere, Pinterest, Facebook, um, and Sandraglant.com. Um, mm-hmm. I have a you know free big money moves training that's on there. So you can grab any of those and then we'll get connected and you'll get all of my free goodies. <laughs> Amazing. I'm so grateful for you today. You dropped so much wisdom and knowledge that supports me. Again, I was like, I remember chatting with you back in 2020 and I was like, it was so valuable for me that I implemented so many of the things that you shared. And so I'm excited to go like, look at all the things that you just talked about and uh, see, see what else I can use in my business. So yeah, thank you so and much. You know, I've been, so my YouTube channel is something that I started about a year ago, but now it's more, you know, kind of giving the, the, behind the scenes, like you kind of get to peel back the curtain um, and see what are these automations? What are these systems? How do I do this? Because again, it's possible if you are someone who's hungry for that, but you want, you want the family life, you want the business life, you want to have your own personal care time. This is number one, the program for you, the power mom four by four, but also dive into my YouTube channel, dive into the Slayer Day podcast, because the resources are there. You just have to be hungry enough to go get it, search for it, and then implement it. 